And we are back on Big Board Sports. It is all about you, Albany men's lacrosse. I can tell you that. You want the headline locally. It's an easy one. And Scott Marr has been with us from the beginning every Monday here on Big Board Sports to talk about his team and how far and how deep of a run they can make. Well, it's pretty darn deep right now. And it's on to the next round uh, with a matchup against Maryland at 2.30 in Delaware on Saturday. Good morning, Coach. How are you? I'm awesome, Roger. How are you guys doing? We're great. Have you have you have you come down from the incredible high of the wild 15-12 win on uh, on Saturday against North Carolina? Starting to, you know, starting to. We we we're fortunate right now. We don't play those Sundays, so today's kind of a day off. So we're gonna kind of enjoy it a little bit longer here. But certainly thinking about the turfs already. And uh, but yeah, we just. You know what? A, what an unbelievable night for us and our school and and uh, our program. It just was just fantastic, and just couldn't be happier for the for the area and just the support we got from everybody was incredible. All right, explain to me how the two halves worked here. You were so dominant in the first half. Had the what fourteen to two lead. North Carolina makes a big run. What happened in the second half? Well, I mean, as you know, the game, it's a game of runs for sure. Um, you know, and everything went right for us in the first half. Probably the best first half I've ever, we've ever played, uh, really at any level uh, I've, I've coached at or played at. Um, I mean, 14 goals against a team like that, you know, in a half, and, just, you know, nothing went wrong. Um, but we knew they were going to fight. You know, we knew they weren't going to quit. Um, you know, again, it's a game of runs, but at the same time, like, you know, it was – you know, they get the first one early. They get a second one a couple minutes later. I thought we actually played pretty well defensively most of the third quarter. Um, you know, they score four goals, uh, you know, in the last maybe like three minutes. They kind of get a couple lucky bounces. Not lucky bounces, but they get a couple bounces. Uh, and next thing you know, it goes from 14 to 5 to 14 to 9. You know, their goaltender made two really, really good saves on us kind of about the eight-minute mark. You know, if we'd scored one of those, maybe it kind of – you know, it, it, it uh, halts him a little bit there. But, uh, you know, the kid made a couple of saves, give him credit. And, you know, next thing you know, they, they get those quick ones at the end of the third, third quarter, and all of a sudden it's a three-goal, you know, it's a, it's a five-goal game now going into the fourth, and they get a couple early ones. But I'll be honest, you know, ten minutes ago they scored their twelfth goal, and that was it. You know, our defense shut them down. You know, we cleared the ball well. Um, we had good possessions on offense. And then, uh, you know, Adam gets a big goal with about five minutes to go, and, once we got that last goal, it was like the, the momentum went straight back onto our sideline. Um, and once that goal went in, it was like you could feel we were going to win that game and all we had to do was close it out. So, you know, again, game of runs. We played the full 60 minutes. You know, they just had a, you know, they had a good 14, 15-minute stretch. Hey, Scott, winning obviously helps, I know. But I talked to friends uh, and, and obviously to Roger on the show here before that game. And I said, with a game like you have to embrace the weather. You knew the weather was going to be awful and it rained like crazy. But those, to me, have always been games that I've remembered attending is when the weather is really bad, it just creates an atmosphere that kind of rallies everybody together. Take us down to the sideline and, and what it was like in that atmosphere. Yeah, there's no doubt. Like I said, you know, to have a record crowd uh, you know, here at Albany, you know, uh, again, just, just beyond my wildest imagination that we would have this kind of a night, um, and again, with it raining that much and for almost 7,000 people to come out and support us was just, it was absolutely fantastic. I've been getting emails and texts all weekend, and uh, people just enjoyed the game and how much fun they had, and, and, and think about how much fun they had in that rain, how, how nice it would have been if it was a nice <laughs> night, but, uh, you know, we, we just had to embrace it. We knew it was going to be bad. You know, we just talked about tightening our sticks up a little bit, and, you know, as the game goes on, too, it's tougher for the players. Their sticks get a little tight or loose, and... You know, they have to kind of be careful on how they throw the ball and stuff like that. So the weather had a little bit of an effect on it, but uh, it really didn't. You know, again, we play an outdoor sport. We've been in a lot of bad weather up here in the up, you know, upstate area. So uh, the kids are used to it, and, and it was uh, really didn't have that much of a difference on our, on our game. Scott, I was wondering if, if, you know, all the tickets that were sold in the sellout with the rain, I, my question was how many of those people are really going to come out and show up? Or are they just going to stay in? It was on ESPNU, get in a nice front row seat somewhere uh, with a cold beverage hanging out doing your thing. But it looked to me like everyone who had a ticket, maybe not everyone, but close to it decided, you know what, I don't care. This is an historic night where this is North Carolina. This is yeah. an NCAA tournament a, a defending champ. We're going to watch this game. Yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, again, I just I can't thank the people enough for braving the weather and, and being there and giving us that energy. I mean, from the opening whistle, from the you know the time the national anthem, it was so loud at the end of the national anthem. 
uh, you know, I've played in front of 32, 33,000 people before. Uh, you know, it was, it was incredible how loud that stadium gets. You know, at the end of the game, when the, when the time was, the clock was running out, I, I just kind of walked out onto the field with about five seconds to go, and I turned around and I looked up at the stands. It was just, it was, a, it was just a, what a feeling to see the people just in a frenzy, just going crazy for us. And, you know, again, our, our team completely fed off that energy. You know, once we scored our first goal, it was like, it just, it went right into every one of those players and, and, uh, you know, it really helped us in that first half and throughout the whole game, you know, just to, to keep going. I mean, every time North Carolina would score, our alumni are chanting Albany, Albany, and it was just, you know, uh, it was just incredible. Well, two separate 6-0 runs in the first half to go up 14-3. It was like it was like a scoring machine one after another. It yeah. was incredible to watch. They did a great job, too, on ESPNU uh, with the coverage of UA. All right, Scotty, how do you get this team to come down now a little bit off the off the high, refocus, and – you're gonna you're gonna play Maryland again. It is Sunday, not Saturday. Sunday on the road at, at two thirty at the University of Delaware. Is it good that you're playing Maryland that you just played them? You only lost to them by a goal. Is that a good matchup for you moving forward? I mean, I don't know if it's good that we're playing the number one team in the country. Uh, they're they're certainly a very tough opponent. I mean, you know, think about it. We're, we played the defending national champions on on uh, Saturday night, and now we have to go play the defending runner-ups uh, from last year, and they've been runner-up the last three out of four last year, uh, year. so certainly a tough opponent, but it was nice that we did get a chance to play them earlier in the year. Um, you know, we feel good about playing them, uh, but we, you know, we'll basically this week, you know, t- today and tomorrow, we'll we'll watch film with the boys, and, and we'll put this game to rest, and then, you know, all all, uh, all focus will be on Maryland, really, from, from this afternoon on, so um, the toughest part for the kids is they got to try to put this one behind them because you know, if you keep thinking about last Saturday, it's not going to do us any good for this Saturday. So we got to move forward, and they got to understand that it's, uh, they'll have time to go back and watch all the highlights and all that stuff later on. But they just got to stay focused and study for their exams and, and stay off the internet and stop watching you know <laughs> people saying how great they are and what a great game and stuff and and really focus on uh, and focus on Maryland. Hey, Coach, uh, I know you spoke about it in your postgame presser Saturday night, but I'm hoping you could share with our listening audience here this morning why Delaware is so special for you and why you're looking so forward to going back to Delaware to play this NCAA tournament game. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's where I got my start. You know, I had my first opportunity to coach right out of college. Uh, Bob Schillinglaw, the head coach who just retired this year, had been at Delaware since 1979. Uh, you know, Coach Schillinglaw gave me an opportunity to be a Division One coach, and uh, you know, I met my wife. Uh, you know, started a family in Delaware, and uh, you know, just a special place for us. My in-laws are from Delaware. My wife is from Delaware. She went to Newark High School and and went to the University of Delaware. Both my in-laws are from the. I mean, my brother-in-laws went to the University of Delaware. So it, uh, you know, the school holds a lot of meaning for my family. So um, you know, just excited to get back there and see some old friends and and uh, have a chance to play in that stadium again. We, I only played in it a couple of times as a coach when we were there, um, but it was uh, it's a neat place to play. And, and again, just looking forward to, to that atmosphere and, and being, uh, being back down there and, and bringing back so many fond memories. I have my, my Delaware guys. I've been getting emails from them all week and, you know, and, and this week, and uh, you know, certainly I'll get more going into this weekend. So uh, just, just excited for it. Like I said, it's always nice to go down memory lane and, and hopefully, just uh, you know, hopefully it brings us a little bit of luck. You know what I mean? Hopefully, it gives us something that can, you know, get us through this uh, quarterfinal game. We've been here four times now, and you know, we're just uh, we're a small step away from uh, from making that next jump. So hopefully, it'll happen. Yeah, all the more reason with everything you just said to go there and get a win. Right? All the, all those reasons, stack them up. Uh, hey, one more for me. What what did Saturday night do and mean for the for the sport of lacrosse in general as a whole? Yeah, I, I think it was just you know. To see a team like Albany again has been in this league, you know, been in Division One for 17, 18 years. Um, you know, just the style that we play, and and uh, just again to see to see us set a record, you know, that uh, that's this is incredible. You know, the support that we got from the community just shows how important lacrosse is, and and how important our university is to this area, and and. Uh, you know, again, we appreciate all those people coming out in that rain, but it was, uh, I think it's huge for our area. It just shows that, you know, upstate lacrosse, you know, it's not just Syracuse uh, area, and it's not just Westchester County or Long Island, but, you know, the Capital District now has got some really, really good lacrosse, not only at our level, but, uh, 
you know, over at RPI and Union, those guys are doing an unbelievable job. The high school level with, you know, Niskuna and Shen and, and so many other teams, uh, Saratoga, Shakers having a great year this year. So, you know, it's just fun to see so much good lacrosse being played in this area. So uh, couldn't be happy to be a part of it. You know, I'm just a small part of the whole cog and just excited to, uh, you know, that we're moving on the next round here and hopefully uh, keep the excitement going for the region. Scott, as always, thanks for a few minutes here on Big Board Sports on Monday. And I'm sure we'll speak to you uh, certainly for television uh, purposes as this week goes on. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Have thanks, a great Scotty. Day.